Flying. It's the closest most of us get to experiencing what it's like to be a god, soaring above the clouds, sipping overpriced ginger ale, quietly judging people who take their shoes off. It's magical, and statistically it's one of the safest ways to travel. But when those metal birds do decide to plummet from the sky, it's usually not because of a flock of geese staging a daring mid-air heist of the snack cart. Despite all the fancy technology and highly trained pilots, human mistakes are responsible for over 70% of aviation accidents. So buckle up, Buttercup, because today we're diving headfirst into the wild world of human error in aviation. Imagine this, you're soaring through the air at 30,000 feet responsible for hundreds of lives, and all you can think about is that warm inviting bed you left behind eight time zones ago. That's the reality for many pilots who work grueling schedules crossing time zones like a caffeinated kangaroo on a pogo stick. Now, pilots are a tough breed. They can land a plane in a hurricane while simultaneously parallel parking and making a souffle. But even the most seasoned pilot isn't immune to the siren song of fatigue. Remember Air India Express Flight 812 back in 2010? The captain had racked up over 100 hours of sleep debt. Unsurprisingly, this sleep-deprived state contributed to a landing overrun and a crash that could have been avoided with a good night's rest. And it's not just international flights. Those short-haul hops can be just as brutal. So, the next time you're on a plane and you see your pilot yawning, maybe just maybe order them an extra coffee. In the high-stakes world of aviation, clear communication isn't just important, it's absolutely bloody crucial. Take the Tenerife Airport disaster, for example. Picture this, 1977 Tenerife Airport, thick fog, two Boeing 747s, those big boys, taxiing on the same runway. Thanks to a series of miscommunications between the pilots and air traffic control including a missed word and some truly abysmal radio reception, those two jumbo jets collided on the runway, the result, the deadliest aviation accident in history. The Tenerife disaster sent shockwaves through the aviation world, a stark reminder that even the most experienced professionals can fall victim to the perils of miscommunication. In the aftermath, aviation officials got their act together and implemented standardized phrases like Roger, affirmative, and negative. Chapter 3. Automation Dependence – When Autopilot Goes MIA Let's be real, autopilot is a beautiful thing. It's the silent co-pilot, the tireless aviator, the reason pilots can sneak in a quick Sudoku puzzle during a long flight. But here's the catch. Relying too heavily on automation can be a recipe for disaster. Pilots are highly trained to take control when things go south, but sometimes they get a little too comfortable letting the computer do the heavy lifting. Case in point, Air France, Flight 447. This tragic accident back in 2009 showed the world just how dangerous automation dependence can be. The lesson here? Autopilot is a fantastic tool but it's just that, a tool. Pilots need to stay sharp and be prepared to take the reins when the digital gremlins come out to play. Chapter 4. Poor decision making rushing into disaster. Let's be honest, nobody likes delays, not you, not me, and certainly not the airlines who are constantly trying to squeeze every last penny out of their operations. But here's the thing, when it comes to aviation, Rushing things is about as wise as trying to fight a bear while wearing a suit made of bacon. Pilots face immense pressure to land planes on time. They've got connecting flights to think about, impatient passengers tapping their feet, and let's not forget the airline executives breathing down their necks. Take Avianca Flight 52 for example. The crew, facing fuel shortage due to delays and bad weather, failed to properly declare a fuel emergency to air traffic control. By the time they attempted to land, they had run out of fuel, resulting in a crash that claimed the lives of 73 people. The Avianca Flight 52 disaster served as a harsh reminder that safety should always, always come first. Chapter 5 Checklist What Checklist? The Case of the Missing Flower Flying a plane is a tad more complicated than driving your Uncle Gary's rusty Toyota Corolla. It requires precision, skill, and a whole lot of checklists. These checklists are meticulously designed to catch potential errors and ensure that every single step is followed to the letter. But sometimes, in the heat of the moment, with adrenaline pumping and the pressure on, steps can be skipped, overlooked, or just plain forgotten. Remember Eastern Airlines Flight 401? 
the pilots, distracted by a faulty landing gear indicator light, became so fixated on troubleshooting the issue that they failed to notice the autopilot had been inadvertently disengaged. The result? A crash that claimed the lives of 101 people. The Eastern Airlines Flight 401 disaster highlighted the dangers of checklist complacency and the importance of maintaining situational awareness. Today, pilots undergo rigorous training to instill the importance of checklist discipline, ensuring that every I is dotted and every T is crossed. Outro, so, are we all doomed? Spoiler alert, probably not. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Fabian, you've just spent the last however many minutes scaring the living daylights out of me with tales of plane crashes and pilot mishaps. Should I just kiss my frequent flyer Miles goodbye and embrace a life of ground transportation? And the answer is, probably not. Despite all the ways human error can rear its ugly head at 30,000 feet, the reality is that flying today is safer than ever. Thanks to better pilot training, stricter regulations, technological advancements, and the lessons learned from past mistakes, the aviation industry has made remarkable strides in safety. So the next time you're on a plane, take a deep breath, relax, enjoy the in-flight entertainment, and maybe, just maybe, offer your pilot a coffee. They've earned it.